I'm CBS 19 Chief Meteorologist Travis Koshko for Seaville 107.5 and 1260 WCHV. WCHV Time 708. Really, we're going to keep playing this every hour. It will feel like Groundhog Day. We don't know. We won't find out Unlike the uh, DJ in the movie of the same name, I won't keep telling you it's 6 o'clock in the morning. But uh, Happy Groundhog Day. Uh, and I, I posted this to Twitter with tongue slightly in cheek. If uh, Zooty Jasser sees his shadow this morning, does that mean six more weeks of hysteria uh, of MSNBC calling it the Muslim ban or not? I don't know, but he is on the phone with us. And uh, it's been too long, uh, Dr. Jasser. Welcome back uh, to Joe Thomas in the morning. How are you doing, sir? Doing well. It's always great to be with you, Joe. Thanks for having me back. AIFdemocracy.org is where you find them online. Author for the battle of uh, author of the battle for the soul of Islam, and uh, you know certainly one of the great voices in this area. Uh, we did the outrageous thing of posting the actual text of the president's executive order regarding migration and and travel in between uh, these countries on our website, so people can read it. The hysteria has died down a little bit uh, in that area, not due to any politicians fanning it down. But here, our mayor in Charlottesville, who really isn't a mayor, he's just the uh, highest ranking city councilor, uh, went out and had a press uh, event where he declared us the capital of the resistance uh, as it regards to what MSNBC is calling the Muslim ban. Um, you know, help us get a grasp uh, for the for the Muslim community that's just living been working, uh, you know, paying taxes here in, uh, in the United States, uh, Zudi, uh, for what really is going on here and put some reality to this executive order, if you can. Yeah, I think the reality is that the order itself, as you said, uh, on paper, it's, it's fine. We understand there's hot spots. We understand that, you know, you can't just sort of uh, um, allow anyone in. Uh, we Muslims are not an identity movement, and the left keeps wanting to use us as that. And uh, they're putting things in like the words Muslim or ban, and they're not in that document. And, the, you know, President Obama paused immigration from Iraq for six months. And, uh, the you know, there have been similar things done in the past, but it just has been done quietly. And the media that was under general anesthesia for eight years uh, now seems to have woken up and is paying attention to certain things and using it. I will say, though, you know, when you talk about the Muslim or Arabic community, the implementation of this has been amateurish. I mean, you know, when you have folks that already have family here, doctors that are coming for a match in March uh, to to be selected into residency programs that are stuck now, they can't come for 90 days. uh, I'm not sure I understand how that benefits our messaging and how it benefits keeping us Mm. secure. Um, You know, they probably should have. I understand that you don't want the the bad guys to start running and scattering. So you just want to put it out there. But, you know, after 90 days, it's going to be off. And I don't think the vetting problem is going to be fixed in 90 days. We have to start to vet against jihadists and the ideologies. And I agree, the vetting problem is completely broken. It's been using a tactic uh, of terrorism and violence as a screening mechanism. And that's just not a way to vet. You have to vet against ideas that threaten our security and those who don't believe in our social contract. But that's going to take a commission on radical exam. I'm sorry, radical Islamism that the president had discussed in his campaign, and that's going to be longer than 90 to 120 days to implement. Is this? And I felt like this order was much more about the refugee. Uh, crisis coming from some of these countries where, uh, you know, war torn almost doesn't quite encompass what's going on there, uh, where you have gangs, uh, roving gangs of thugs just going and committing horrible human rights violations. And we should be certainly looking at that and and maybe through that prism as well, Dr. Jasser. Uh, But as far as just the regular population, uh, you know, f- filing for visas, coming in uh, and that kind of thing. It does seem that the uh, order, executive order, specifically says this does not address these visas. This does not – this these 90-day moratoriums and such did not seem like, uh, according to the text of the document, uh, that they w- impacted them. Is this implementation problem something where for political gain – we see uh, a former Muslim Brotherhood or I guess a Muslim Brotherhood member of the 
the State Department is now the head of Los Angeles International Airport's security uh, uh, division. So, you know, what would his inclination be to uh, execute this order to the letter uh, if it could make for some good theater and perhaps make the political and and uh, uh, media PR case if I just held up everybody under the guise of, hey, I don't know what I'm supposed to do? Uh, because I don't necessarily buy uh, – I think Sebastian Gorka was on TV last night saying there were – most of the places there weren't these issues, just in a couple of places where conveniently people like Terry McAuliffe and Tom Perriello or Chuck Schumer were able to make it to that airport and stand in front of a crowd of inconvenienced uh, travelers. Uh, this was done for for the uh, optics of it, Dr. Jasser. Uh, uh, what do you think about that statement? I think for the most part that's correct. Uh, that, that's the reality of what you said is that uh, there was nothing – you know, the order was misinterpreted by some uh, at the at the border, at the airports and others, and they uh, immediately did sort of a whiplash and, and stopped everything when, in fact, the directive uh, uh, did not say for them to do that. Um, there is a component of it that talks about no travel from these countries for 90 days, but the refugee issue and the vetting was 120 days. So that interpretation of what the 90 days issue is is still sort of up in the air as far as that includes any travel or any new visas or whether they'll honor the old visas. Uh, now, this administration will say, well, the last administration, as you said, had Islamists running things uh, in certain areas, and they can't be trusted, so we have to reboot it and revisit all yeah. these. And if that's true, I, again, I'm not sure I agree with that. I, I think you're exactly right. It's two separate things, folks that come for scholarship issues and other things that are part of training programs. Yes, there may have been some examples of threats in the past. There were not only refugees, but folks traveling here that can violate their visa and stay here, And uh, um, as we saw with the San Bernardino shooters and others. Um, but uh, at the end of the day, um, I'm not sure that the harm to the implementation and the messaging, because messaging is extremely important when you're fighting radical Islamism. Mm -hmm. And if they get ahead of us on the messaging, we're going to lose. And, and, um, and but to the, uh, we're not dealing with the reality, as you said. Dr. Jasser, I want to hang on to that messaging point in a moment. Author of The Battle for the Soul of Islam and the head of the American Islamic Forum for Democracy, AA, AIF Democracy uh, on Twitter as well, AIF uh, Democracy on Twitter. Follow them there. Dr. Jasser, can I just hang on to you for a moment? I have to take a quick break here. Sure. We'll have details on these stories for you and more in 10 minutes here on WCHV. Back in uh, with Dr. Zudi Jasser from the American Islamic Forum for Democracy, uh, AIF Democracy on Twitter, and the author for the Battle of Soul, Battle for the Soul of Islam. We're talking about uh, the president's executive order, what it is and what it isn't. Uh, and you, you were talking about optics. You were talking about getting in front of the message. Uh, Dr. Jasser, and I feel like, just like with uh, hashtag Black Lives Matter, uh, we're, we're looking at a very small subset of the population that have found, uh, like a Kaiser Khan, who is a Charlottesvillian, uh, and I saw him the other day at this press conference announcing that we are now the capital of the resistance. Uh, I presume the TIE fighters will arrive shortly uh, before the Death Star gets here. But uh, Kaiser Khan, I went up to him, I thanked him for his son's sacrifice for the country, but here's a guy who's who seems to be making quite a, a public pers uh, a persona for himself based on the sacrifices of his child. And I would never uh, I can't imagine the pain of losing your child. But he volunteered to go fight wars for this country uh, and to fight radical Islam for this country. And I think that needs to be reminded. Uh, but but I, I feel like the majority of the Muslim community is just, you know, hanging around and, and looking at these people saying, what are you talking about? Is that a fair thing? to say, or am I misunderstanding what's going on in the in the mosques around the country? Well, I think it depends on which Muslims you're talking about. With Muslims that are part of this identity movement that believe that being Muslim is some type of political collective group, that we identify as one platform, one political movement, and the states, if Muslims are a majority, should also have a, a similar type of platform, uh, they're going to love this. They They... Uh, eat up uh, hysteria about uh, making Muslims into victims and making America into uh, being on the defensive that it's anti-Islam and anti-Muslim and bigoted, et cetera. Uh, so, but the other Muslims, the majority, 
of whom who many may not go to mosque, many may not belong to any identity Muslim movements. Yes, I agree. They're looking at this saying, you know, hold on a second. Yeah, we may not have supported Mr. Trump for various reasons as a candidate, but you have to separate the message from the messenger. Uh, but they are saying, you know, listen, who are our allies domestically and abroad? If It's not only what we're against, being against terrorism and extremism, but America also has to be clear on what we're for. And if we're for liberty and freedom, then the most important allies are the, the masses in the Middle East uh, who are trying to shed uh, dictatorship and tyranny. And be it uh, not only the Islamists we want to vet against, I would hope we're going to vet against uh, Russian uh, autocrats, uh, against Chinese uh, um, uh, tyrannical communists, uh, against mm -hmm. uh, Saudi Wahhabis and others. So uh, there needs to be a process where we're no longer ashamed of vetting against those ideas that are incompatible. And we see, you know what, we're also for freedom and liberty. We're going to start to advance those ideas because there's been a vacuum in the Middle East and in the Muslim consciousness even domestically. And it's been always about two choices. As you and I have talked before, it needs to be about a third pathway of liberty. Mm -hmm. And when we talk about each of these, like this executive order and others, in the messaging has to be clear up front that we are not going to surrender what America stands for is, yes, if you share our values, we welcome you to our shores. We're not going to close our borders down from that. Every conflict we fought, World War II, the Cold War, and others has uh, – um, good for the ideals of America without compromising those values. Let, let me ask you a question, Dr. Jasser, on this, uh, because there are many who will tell me that, you know, be, because uh, the, the, there are those who interpret the Quran to tell them it's OK to lie uh, in uh, pursuit of jihad uh, and the pursuit of the victory. Uh, you know, how is it? And I, I truly believe the American construct of uh, all men are created equal, endowed by their creator. It's on your just don't take other people's stuff. Don't try to impose yourself on anyone else. And the American construct is truly the one where we all can live together. Um, but it, those who say that uh, maybe this battle, as you say, for the soul of Islam, you know, between those who just want to live their lives and those who feel like they should be waging jihad for that identity purpose. Um, you know, are incompatible right now, and there needs to be some stronger way and, and would want a ban or a, or a, a, a segregation. And, and I, I worry about that because I think that's changing who we are to battle the, the terrorists, and then the terrorists win. Yeah, and the reason we've won every conflict that we, we put our minds into is because there is no more potent more potent movement than an American type movement that unites all those diverse across ethnicities, across origins, and unites under an idea. America is not a landmass, it's, it's an idea. And that is our most powerful tool. So not only do we surrender by changing who we are, but it is the reason we've won so many conflicts in, the, in our history. Um, you know, but, but having said that, we, we have to be clear about how we implement this. Um, you're right, some may lie, but every conflict we've had, we've had Russian spies in the Cold War that ended up coming in mm -hmm. that uh, subverted our security. But for the most part, it's very difficult. If you're an intelligence operative doing work and interviewing folks, I mean, ask the Israelis, ask others. There are ways. A lot of these folks, A, they're not savvy enough to figure out how to break the code, but B, if you get Muslim reformists from our Muslim reform movement involved in explaining you know, how – to, to sit down and figure out what their worldview is, you can quickly tell if they think the caliphate's a good idea, if, how they look at end of times, how they uh, look at free speech, if you can draw cartoons of the prophet, uh, um, the equality of men and women. There are things that should be part of that. And I've talked to actually folks that interview uh, Muslims after prison uh, sentences and uh, look if they've been de-radicalized or not. And there are ways to do that, and there are experts out there. But we just we just had an administration that thinks ideology is not is not a litmus test. So, uh, you know, this is we're sort of getting whiplash because we, we're trying to figure out how to recalibrate. 
Well, and I think at the end of the day, each of us having our own individual rights is the best way to do it. And defending ourselves and you know, and, and watching out for each other uh, is something we do by our own choices, not by government edict or anything like that. And I do think it's a message that wins. You mentioned the Chinese. Southeast Asia is home to a very large Muslim community uh, as well. And people forget that there's a Muslim community there as well that uh, is under some horrible treatment by their governments as well. Uh, that we, we should be the shining light on the hill for uh, Dr. Jasser. Uh, what, what's next coming up before we're done? I know uh, the uh, MuslimReformMovement.org, it's a new website you've put together. Uh, you're now working with uh, the folks at The Blaze doing a podcast called Reform This uh, as well. Uh, 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 so uh, what's next coming up that we should be watching for before we see you again? I have a, a uh, uh, high-profile newsletter I'm doing at TakeBackIslam.com. Uh, which will be rolling out in the next month or so, go to the website, takebackislam.com, sign up for our newsletter, and we'll roll out the excerpts from my podcast, uh, from uh, uh, videos of uh, messaging and and uh, our latest uh, acts, and then I hope to be at CPAC uh, at the well, end of the month in February. Well, then we'll see you there because we're on Radio Row there for that. So uh, travel safely, sir, and we'll talk to you again very soon. Thank you so much, Joe. Appreciate it.